Global News would like to greet you and everyone. Today, we will help you update important international events, while bringing multi-dimensional perspectives and deep reflections on current issues. Topic going on in the world. Right now are the main news that will be in the program. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, hardline ally of Khamenei, killed in helicopter crash. U.S. has no plan to send military trainers into Ukraine, top general says. Indians vote early in fifth phase of polls to avoid blistering heat. Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, a hardliner seen as a potential successor to Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, was killed when his helicopter crashed in poor weather in mountains near the Azerbaijan border, officials and state media said on Monday. The charred wreckage of the helicopter which crashed on Sunday carrying Raisi, Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdollarian and six other passengers and crew was found early on Monday after an overnight search in blizzard conditions. Supreme Leader Khamenei, who holds ultimate power with a final say on foreign policy in Iran's nuclear program, said first Vice President Mohammad Mokba would take over as interim president, the official IRNA news agency reported. I announce five days of public mourning and offer my condolences to the dear people of Iran, Khamenei said in a statement. Mokba, like Raisi, is seen as close to Khamenei. The crash comes at a time of growing dissent within Iran over an array of political, social and economic crises. Iran's clerical rulers face international pressure over Tehran's disputed nuclear program and its deepening military ties with Russia during the war in Ukraine. Since Iran's ally Hamas attacked Israel on October 7, provoking Israel's assault on Gaza, conflagrations involving Iran-aligned groups have erupted throughout the Middle East. Under the Islamic Republic's constitution, a new presidential election must be held within 50 days. South Africa's presidency said on Monday it welcomed an announcement by the International Criminal Court's prosecutor saying he had requested arrest warrants for Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, his defense chief and three Hamas leaders over alleged war crimes. The law must be applied equally to all in order to uphold the international rule of law ensure accountability for those that commit heinous crimes and protect the rights of victims, President Cyril Ramaphosa's office said in a statement. South Africa, a leading voice in championing the cause of Palestinians, has also brought a case against Israel at the International Court of Justice accusing it of genocide, which it denies. Israel and Hamas leaders have dismissed allegations of committing war crimes, and representatives of both sides criticized the prosecutor's decision. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange was given permission on Monday to appeal against extradition to the United States after arguing at London's High Court that he might not be able to rely on his right to free speech in a U.S. court. The Australian-born Assange, 52, is wanted in the U.S. on 18 charges, nearly all under the Espionage Act, relating to WikiLeaks' mass release of secret U.S. documents the largest security breaches of their kind in U.S. military history. The High Court had in March granted him provisional permission to appeal on grounds that he might be discriminated against as a foreign national, but invited the U.S. to submit assurances. After Monday's hearing, two senior judges said Assange's argument that he might not be able to rely on the U.S. First Amendment right to free speech deserved a full appeal, which is unlikely to be held for months. The news prompted cheering and singing from hundreds of supporters who had massed outside the court tying yellow ribbons to the iron railings, holding placards and chanting, Free, free Julian Assange. Assange himself was not present, which his lawyer said was for health reasons. But his wife Stella, who spoke to him after the ruling, said he was, obviously relieved, having not been able to sleep at all. The U.S. is not planning to send military trainers into Ukraine and would likely do so only when the war there with Russia is over, the top U.S. general said on Monday, after France opened the door to sending troops to train Kyiv's forces. More than two years into the war, Russians are slowly advancing in eastern Ukraine, exploiting Ukrainian shortages of manpower and months of delays in arms supplies from the West. That has raised questions about what more the United States and its allies can do, beyond funneling billions of dollars in weaponry and providing intelligence and training to Ukrainian military forces from outside of the country. Right now, there are no plans to bring U.S. trainers into Ukraine, General Charles Q. Brown, the chairman of the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff, told reporters. Once this conflict is over and we're in a better place, then I would suspect we would be able to bring trainers back in, Brown added. Brown spoke alongside U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin after a meeting of Ukraine's military backers. 
Both he and Austin stressed the need to support Kyiv as it faces growing pressure from Russian forces in Kharkiv. The Pentagon dismissed a suggestion from former top State Department official Victoria Nuland to ABC News that President Joe Biden should drop his prohibition on Ukraine using U.S. weaponry to strike targets inside Russia, which the White House has feared could lead to a direct conflict with Moscow. A Russian-drafted United Nations Security Council resolution that called on all countries to prevent, for all time, the placement, threat or use of any weapons in outer space failed on Monday with the 15-member body split over the move. The draft failed to get the minimum nine votes needed. Seven members voted in favor and seven against, while one abstained. A veto can only be cast by the United States, Russia, China, Britain or France if a draft gets at least nine votes. Russia put forward the text after it vetoed a U.S. drafted resolution last month that called on countries to prevent an arms race in outer space. The Russian veto prompted the United States to question whether Moscow was hiding something. We are here today because Russia seeks to distract global attention from its development of a new satellite carrying a nuclear device, Deputy U.S. Ambassador Robert Wood told the Security Council before the vote. He also accused Russia of launching a satellite on Thursday into low Earth orbit that the U.S. assesses as likely a counterspace weapon presumably capable of attacking other satellites in low Earth orbit. Russia deployed this new counterspace weapon into the same orbit as a U.S. government satellite, said Wood, adding that the May 16 launch followed Russian satellite launches, likely of counterspace systems to low Earth orbit, in 2019 and 2022. The Russian draft had language echoing a 2008 proposal by Moscow and Beijing for a treaty banning any weapons in outer space and threats or use of force against outer space objects. But the diplomatic effort did not find international support. Indians voted on Monday in the fifth phase of mammoth general elections, with film actors and sports celebrities among the thousands who turned out early in a bid to avoid scorching afternoon heat in the financial hub of Mumbai. Three hours before voting closed, about 48% of voters had cast ballots in Monday's phase of the world's largest election, which began on April 19, as weather officials warned of more days of heatwaves than usual through the torrid summer. Votes will be counted on June 4, with Prime Minister Narendra Modi expected to win a rare third consecutive term. Voters at a polling station in a tiny lane in central Mumbai waited for hours in snaking queues that advanced slowly. It is claustrophobic and people are falling sick said housewife Shalini Pawar, 42, who queued for three hours. One woman nearly fainted in the heat, she added, calling for authorities to provide drinking water to those waiting. Nearly a billion people are eligible to vote in India's election, but after poor initial turnout in early phases, more exercised the franchise to take the average of the first four rounds to 66.95%, with 69% voting in the fourth phase on May 13. Monday's phase has the fewest constituencies going to the polls, with 89.5 million voters in 49 seats. High-profile candidates in the fray included Trade Minister Piyush Goyal, standing from one of six seats in Mumbai, and Defence Minister Rajnath Singh from Lucknow, both cities where there has been poor voter turnout in the past. The recent news also ended our global news program. Thank you for your attention and follow-up. Please continue to accompany us on our journey to discover the world situation. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new information. Goodbye and see you again.